Okay, hello everybody. I am back after three weeks. I hope you can all hear me. Please let me know uh, if everything's okay and I will tell you straight away I forgot my lovely microphone today so the audio quality is going to be a bit lower so could you let me know in the comments how it sounds does it sound okay please uh, confirm to me that you can hear me um, because I'm using a different microphone and it's slightly worse quality. So I saw a few people are joining. I hope you are well. Please tell me who you are and where you're from. I think it's going to be a bit of a slow start tonight, but uh, as I said, I'm missing my microphone, which feels awful. I love my microphone. There's Heidi, great to see you, thanks for joining. Heidi, how does the audio sound? I'm very sorry, I, uh, I'm using a different microphone, which is probably not very nice. Uh, so please let me know how it's sounding. Starting to get some people coming in now, so please introduce yourselves, let me know where you're from, how are you doing, and then I will start to uh, tell you my news. Okay, so microphone works, but it's a bit scratchy. Yeah, it's deaf. It's nowhere near as good as normal. Uh, so as long as you can hear me, that's the most important thing. Hello, Zera from Zera or Zera. I'm going to say Zera uh, from Turkey. Thank you for joining me. Great to see a new name. I haven't seen you before. Uh, but yes, as I said, microphone's different. I hope it doesn't affect this lesson. I'm going to try my best. We've got lots to talk about today and an interesting subject, I hope. Lolly Lolly, great to see you as always. Good to see some familiar names and some new names. Hello. How are, how are you all? I hope you're all well. I am very well here in Korea. I don't know if you know, but uh, recently we had a zero coronavirus day. No one caught the coronavirus uh, a couple of days ago, so things are very positive. Uh, people are, are starting to go out in the countryside, so that's great. Hello, Lullaby. Great to see you. Um, I hope everyone is well. So, Heidi, Zira, Lolly, Lullaby, how are you? How was your three weeks? I haven't seen you for three weeks. Let's catch up a little bit and then get up, get into today's subject, which is drinking, which I'm uh, looking forward to chat about. Lots of slang words today. I hope that we're going to learn uh, and share with each other. So uh, I haven't seen you in three weeks. There's not much news from my side. My business is continuing as normal. Um, I did another K-pop video recently, so I hope you enjoyed that. That took a lot of work. Um, so uh, I really would love to hear your feedback. I love using different uh, content, in this case K-pop, but uh, if you have any other suggestions, I'm always happy. I'm going to be drinking plenty of water tonight because I have a slightly sore throat too much chatting, but I'm well. No coronavirus, don't worry. So uh, yeah, let me know how you're all doing. Uh, it's great to see there's quite a few people joining already. Uh, let me know where you're from, what you're doing, and uh, we'll get into today's class. So yes, no news from my end, but the spring is here. It's 30, oh, maybe 27 degrees outside which is amazing. I'm in t-shirt uh, today and uh, I'm feeling very positive. Spring is here, summer is coming. Zero, great to hear that. Good to hear you are well. Um, if anyone else would like to introduce themselves, we've got nine people, which is fantastic. Hopefully uh, we, this is a, a good lesson and you're all interested in the drinking topic. Oh, there's my cousin, Mark. Nice to see you. Mark, I'm sorry, but you're going to experience my tinny microphone today. I forgot my decent quality microphone. 
but good to see you in the chat. Uh, we're talking about uh, alcohol, drinking culture today, so uh, hopefully sharing some different slang words and vocabulary and expressions uh, from around the world. So, we've got plenty of people, great to see. Uh, why don't we get straight into today's class? Uh, so, we're talking about drinking today. Uh, my first question is, uh, firstly, do you drink? So, when I say do you drink, I'm going to put that in the chat. When I say do you drink, I am, of course, referring to alcohol. Uh, we've got a quick update here from Heidi, she's fine, um, yeah, that's great, so Austria's getting back into normal life, um, yeah, lullaby, that's a, that's a good point, I, when I made today's lesson, I knew there's going to be people that are not going to be so interested in this, because it's not part of their culture, so don't worry, we're not going to be just talking about drinking and uh, getting drunk, I do want to hear whether it is a part of your culture or not, and why. Um, so I know there's plenty of people among my students who will feel that way. So let me know why that is. Uh, Niazi from Turkey says, of course I do. Do you drink? Of course I do. Me too. I do like to drink. Uh, more family in. Neil Webster, that's my dad. Great to see the family joining. <laughs> uh, so first question, do you drink? Let me know, uh, and then also, if so, what do you drink? I think that's a great place to start. So Lolly's telling us she likes beer. We've got Heidi with, with red wine and gin. Gin, I don't really drink gin. How do you have that, Heidi? Is that a gin and tonic? Do you mix or do you have it as it is or straight? Um, so perhaps that's a good vocabulary to start with if you drink liquor straight, drink something straight, oh, bit bad typing, then it means that you are not mixing it with anything else. Oh, Lolly, you are very posh, uh, drinking champagne. That sounds wonderful. I wish I could join you. Uh, Lolly, is that a normal thing or is that kind of a special occasion? Uh, I, I'm with Heidi, I'm a bit more of a red wine drinker. Uh, Niazi from Turkey, what do you drink? Are you, I don't know what you drink in Turkey. Um, what's the most typical drink? I assume beer. Uh, here in Korea, it's, it is beer is the, is the most typical. Um, now Mary's joining us, great to see you. And I don't drink so often, once in a blue moon. I love it, Mary, you're using today's uh, idiom already. Once in a blue moon, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, but you do like beer and wine. Um, now, as Lullaby mentioned, she doesn't drink. Um, and I think there's quite a few people in the chat, or in this lesson, who don't drink. And if you don't, you can say you are teetotal. Teetotal means you don't drink at all. Um, Leila, great to see you. Lovely to see you today. And yes, I'm doing very well. Feeling healthy. Feeling a bit of energy today, which is great. It's been quite a relaxing day. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling good. And Leila, I, I wonder, you know, maybe you're one of the students today who doesn't drink. I'm not sure. Uh, how is drink in your country? Do people drink? So Heidi has gin and tonic, um, and plenty of cocktails that's mixing, wow, raspberries or rosemary, so obviously you use gin in, in plenty of different drinks. That sounds great. I haven't tried any of those. Um, I haven't really tried much mixing, uh, so you'll have, to, uh, you'll have to teach me about that. Uh, just careful with your spelling, I'm sure it's a, a slip of the finger, but Raspberries, just remove that Y. I'm sure it was a slip of the finger, don't worry. Um, so yes, teetotal. If you're, no, sorry, Lolly. Yeah, if you're teetotal, yes, it means you're sober. But sober simply means you're not drunk, okay? Sober means you're not drunk. Um, teetotal means you never drink. So one of the key words today is drunk. 
So um, I don't know how to put this, but uh, perhaps if I try to be a little creative, there you go. Drunk and sober are opposites. So um, yeah, T uh, what am I saying? Uh, sober, sorry, is uh, something you'd say, for example, if the policeman pulled you over and he said, hey, have you been drinking? You say, no, 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 I'm sober. Um, and But teetotal means you never drink. Um, so I am not teetotal, but I think some people in the, the class may be teetotal today. So Layla confirms, yes, she is teetotal. Um, and lullaby, you would also say you're teetotal and you are in Islam, drinking is forbidden, right. So lullaby, in your country, is it very rare to drink? Or, you know, what percentage of people don't drink? Um, I know in your country, Islam is the most common religion. So, what's the situation there? Um, Heidi, yes, ah, drink that, oh, sorry. When I say teetotal, drink nothing in terms of alcohol, if that's what you mean. Uh, but tea and coffee are fine, of course, even though they do have caffeine, so it is a, a kind of a drug. But uh, teetotal is referring to not drinking alcohol. Uh, and we have two people today who are teetotal. Um, Niazi says, uh, and if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm very sorry. Uh, it looks like Niazi. Um, you drink beer um, and a gin too. Look at all these gin drinkers in the in the les in the chat. Uh, I don't drink it. I've, I, I I have had it before. Um, and yes, that's the same as a lot of people, right? I think a lot of people. It depends on the event. Depends what you're doing. For me, very often it's a, a red wine. Um, I also like apple cider. Now, can, does everyone know? Oh, I've lost my chat. Apple. Apple cider. Does everyone know what apple cider is? Uh, here in Korea, it's very hard to find. Um, and it's just not really taking off. Uh, it, apple cider is a wonderful drink. Um, see, see if you can tell me what it is. Um, uh, Heidi says apple wine. Heidi, I think I'm going to say... I, Yes, I, I think it is a kind of apple wine, but I always describe it as an apple beer. Uh, the reason I don't say it's an apple wine is apple wine tends to be stronger, so it's more towards sort of 10%, whereas um, you basically cider is fermented apple, um, and it normally comes in around 5% like a beer, so it's an apple beer, but you're right, I, I'm sure we could call it an apple wine as well. Yeah, so Layla, I thought it was forbidden in your country. So, same question to you, Layla, as I asked Lullaby. Does that mean no one drinks? Uh, or can you find places where people drink? Um, are there small bars where you can drink? Or is it just totally forbidden? Um, I'd be very interested to know that. So, yes, I'm a fan of apple cider. But I want to, as I mentioned earlier, I said apple cider hasn't taken off in Korea. So I think that's pretty interesting language. It's an interesting structure. It hasn't taken off. Um, so that's a phrasal verb, to take off. Take off means to become popular. Um, so for example, what's taken off in Korea? Um, oh, wine has taken off. Uh, coffee has taken off. Uh, there's lots of things that have taken off in Korea but apple cider hasn't, and that means it hasn't become popular. Um, has apple cider, so I'll ask you the same question, has apple cider taken off in your country? Let me know in the chat. Uh, Bearing Beauty, lovely name, Bearing Beauty. In Morocco, you can find wine in clubs and really posh restaurants. I see, so does that mean it's not normal, like you can't find a lot of bars, that you don't, you have to go to special special venues. Um, I'm not sure about Morocco. Um, so yeah, Heidi says it's like a wine. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you could say both. The reason I say that, Heidi, and uh, my father can, can uh, confirm this for me, 
we have apple wine at home. Uh, my dad makes apple wine, and that's that must be getting towards 12 or 14 percent. Um, so I think of that as apple wine, which you uh, drink slowly, whereas cider you drink a bit quicker. Um, Leila, so it's banned. Wow, there's no place for drinking. That's incredible. So let me ask you one more question, Leila. Do you think, uh, and maybe you don't know, maybe you can't really say, but do you think there are kind of underground bars? And when I say underground bars, I mean bars that are not legal. They are secret and certain people know it. So we'd call them kind of underground bars. Um, okay, no worries, Layla. Uh, I'm also having a little bit of, uh, it's a bit stuttery tonight, my, my Wi-Fi. Um, so Bearing Beauty says it's uh, forbidden. And that's why it's really hard to find it. Yeah. yeah. So I think you're probably in the same situation as a few people in today's lesson. So today's lesson is not for everyone. Uh, sometimes that will be the case. Um, but yes, uh, cider hasn't taken off. Uh, and dad, yeah, he confirms that it is 14%. So that's a wine, um, whereas the ciders I drink are more like uh, 5%. Okay, so I'm going to ask you another question. For those who drink, how often do you drink? And obviously when I say drink, I mean alcohol. How often do you drink alcohol? Um, sorry, I have a very itchy nose, so I'm going to keep scratching my nose because uh, I do have hay fever and I'm suffering from it at the moment. So I will be scratching my nose. Uh, so Heidi, it hasn't really taken off, right? Um, yeah, it, it, generally you do find it in Irish pubs. That's the normal thing. We can find it in Korea in Irish pubs, pubs but it's very difficult. So let me ask, so how often do you drink? And that brings us to our first idiom today, once in a blue moon. And we can use this, the people that don't drink can use this as well. Once in a blue moon means very rarely, very rarely. Um, Niazi has a really interesting phrase here. I'm a, a social drinker. That's a really useful phrase, actually, a social drinker, like a social smoker. Someone who drinks only in social situations like parties or gatherings, get togethers. Um, so, yes, um, once in a blue moon is an idiom meaning very rarely. Um, uh, and for those who don't drink, please give me your examples as well. What do you do once in a blue moon? What do you do once, oopsie daisy, in a blue moon? What do you do once in a blue moon? Am I writing that right? Uh, what do you do once in a blue moon? Sorry, my eyes are all off. Uh, Short English Online says, I visit here once in a blue moon. Well, I hope you do it more than once in a blue moon. That would be nice. Uh, so once in a blue moon, very rarely. Uh, what do you do once in a blue moon? Heidi, I go shopping. Yes, I go clothes shopping once in a blue moon. Very rarely. Uh, I, do, I don't mind clothes shopping. I do enjoy it, but uh, I go once in a blue moon, uh, hopefully to find some good deals. Mary says uh, we drink from time to time. Uh, after working, yeah, okay. Mary, where are you from? Just remind me, I think I've seen you before, but uh, I remember seeing you on Twitter, but could you remind me where you're from? I'm interested to know. Um, and keep coming with your examples of once in a blue moon. Uh, what do I do once in a blue moon? Um, nowadays, I go cycling once in a blue moon. Maybe that's not such a good example. I do try to go uh, sometimes. Um, I go traveling once in a blue moon. And I think a lot of people will say the same now. Uh, Lolly, I drink to celebrate special events. Okay, so maybe kind of a social drinker like Niazi mentioned earlier. Um, and I think that's a very healthy thing to do. Just do it on special events. Uh, very good for your health. And that's why you're a champagne drinker, right, Lolly? Because you're only doing it on, on special occasions. 
Okay, it's great to see some more people joining. Please uh, let me know who you are and where you're from. Um, again, just to remind everyone, I had some, well, no, I can't say I had some issues. I didn't bring my lovely microphone. That's why my voice is a little tinny today. I'm using my cheaper microphone, so very sorry about that. I hope it's okay. Um, so, once in a blue moon, any more examples? Does anyone want to give me an example of something you do once in a blue moon? I'll tell you another thing. I study Korean once in a blue moon. I'm sorry to say I should do it more. I'm, I'm living here in Korea, but I study Korean once in a blue moon, and I should do it. I should start practicing. Okay, so I think we've covered uh, two of today's keywords, once in a blue moon and teetotal. Uh, Lolly says, once in a blue moon, I go to Paris. Ah, right. Yes. So very rarely. Yeah, well, it was the same as me. Um, yeah, thanks, Short. Really appreciate it. Uh, hope to see you sometime. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you joining. And uh, Leila, you're not clear, but yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I do regret it. I always have to bring my microphone home, and I didn't today, so I'm ever so sorry. I hope you can at least catch what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, Lolly, I'm the same. When I live in England, I go to London once in a blue moon. Very rarely. So let's, uh, let's go on to our next one. Now, the next key phrase for today is lightweight. Lightweight, which is, uh, normally we use it as a noun. So we say, I am a lightweight. Uh, I am a lightweight. Now, if you say, I am a lightweight, this is one for the drinkers. So this is for people who do drink, but they are not very good at drinking. If they have a little bit of alcohol, they feel drunk, which is the word we discussed earlier. They have an effect from the alcohol. Perhaps their face flushes. Their face flushes. Uh, I'll put that in because that's a nice word as well. Your face flushes. That means your face goes red. Um, a lot of Koreans do that as well, interestingly. Um, I heard it's genetic. Some Koreans, uh, their face faces flush after just one, uh, one drink. Um, so I heard that's a genetic thing. So lightweight. Who in this... this uh, I can't remember what to say. This lesson, I suppose. Who in this lesson is a lightweight? People that don't hold alcohol. Well done, Lolly. That's a good expression. Yeah, to, you can't hold your alcohol. So who's a lightweight? I don't think I'm a lightweight. Uh, I'm a kind of average. I'd say I'm average for, uh, yeah, among my friends for sure. I can have a few, um, but I don't drink regularly, so... Uh, I'm certainly not a heavyweight. So is anyone in the comments a lightweight? Um, and while we're talking about that, while you're... Uh, ah, yes, Heidi, yeah, you're right. Um, there, it is a genetic thing, isn't it? Um, another... <laughs> Lolly's not a lightweight. I'm a middleweight, yes. I think that's right, I'm a middleweight. I think that uh, describes me accurately. Um, let Lolly's not. Lolly, I don't know. I thought you went, you drunk on uh, celebratory occasions. Uh, so do you have a lot of celebrations? I'm starting to wonder whether you're a lightweight or not. Or perhaps you're, uh, you're drinking a little more than these celebrations. Um, yes, that's another thing, Heidi. Depends on the uh, alcohol, right? For these... Strong alcohols, it can be difficult to tolerate. Uh, for me, it is. Um, I don't tolerate beer or cider well. Okay, so that's why you're a red wine drinker. Uh, perhaps you're a bit more of a middleweight for red wine. Um, so, yeah, another word that just came into my head, and it's so important for today's class, is, uh, <laughs> is uh, tipsy. Tipsy. Does anyone know what tipsy means? Um, tipsy is a really common one. Uh, I'll give you a clue. It's in between... Uh, what did we do earlier? Uh, was it 
drunk and sober, right? Yeah, we said sober and drunk. Tipsy's in between sober and drunk. So what does that mean? Let me know in the comments. So we've got a few key words, lightweight, your face flushes, and tipsy. What does tipsy mean? By the way, I think my face is flushing because it's so hot in here. The weather is unbelievable today. We're hitting 27 or 28 degrees. It's really hot. Um, yeah, good Heidi. Little bit drunk. Um, <laughs> Niazi's still a bit tipsy from last night. Obviously, you had a heavy one last night. Um, yeah, so good question, Layla. And I'll try to always let you know that because obviously you non-drinkers need to know. Lightweight, no. Uh, tipsy, no. You can't use those outside of the alcohol topic. But face flushes, yes, you can. So as I just mentioned there, it's hot in here, so I think now my face is flushing, which means my face is going red. Um, so you can use a f your face flushes when you're hot, like I am now, or when you're embarrassed. You know when you're embarrassed and your face goes red, you feel, um, or maybe upset. In that case, your face flushes, it goes red. So yeah, later, good comment. I will keep trying to let you know which ones you can use outside of drinking. Uh, but flushes, yeah, is a really common word for that. Um, also, of course, Layla, once in a blue moon. Um, Bearing Beauty, tipsy is someone who drinks a lot. No, it's actually, I think Heidi mentioned it is a little drunk. It's when you, uh, when you are just slightly drunk, you, you know, you, perhaps you've had one or two drinks, then you feel tipsy, you feel slightly dizzy, um, that's, that's tipsy. So Bearing Beauty, in terms of drinking a lot, I'm going to give you some kind of slang words soon, a little bit later, that you can use British slang words for people who are drunk or very drunk. So please hold on, I will give you some great English slang soon. Hamid, great to see you, as always, uh, welcome to the chat, uh, and obviously, as always, to everyone, if you have any questions outside of today's subject, please let me know, um, and uh, I will try to answer. So, where are we on the list? We've done lightweight. Now, I put on the list cider and perry, um, and the reason I did this is, and this is just alcohol, um, the reason I did this is because it's something I really like, uh, as my father knows. Um, and so cider is apple beer. We already discussed it. It's about 5%. If you haven't tried it, I do recommend it. It's one of my favorite drinks, maybe my favorite. It's a great summer drink. Drink it with ice. Perry uh, is very much the same, except it's a different fruit. Uh, Perry comes from pears. Now, I am interested, I'm just going to put in the comment the, the fruit pear. I'm interested, do you have pears in your country? And the reason I ask is um, I'm in Korea now and they have pears, but they're like this big. They're huge and they're very different. They're kind of crispy. They're so different from English pears. So they're this shape and they're very large, whereas in England, pears are kind of small. It's, you know, smaller than my fist. Um, uh, but we use them to make an al alcohol called perry, which I also really like. Fermented pear. So do you have pears in your country? Uh, here, as I said, very big and kind of a golden brown color. It's very strange. Heidi, yeah, perfect. <laughs> that's that's what I know as a pair. Uh, perfect use of a, one of those uh, emoticons or whatever you call them. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you a picture of a Korean golden pear. But if you Google Korean golden pear, I don't know what they're called. They, they, I'm sure they have a specific name. Um, you will see that they are very different. Uh, they taste different. Um, the texture is different. Yeah. Um, Zeynep, yeah, you also have in Turkey, yeah, so they're, they're very common. Um, so yeah, I put in the, today's keywords, cider and perry, 
just because I'm a massive fan of cider and perry. They are some of my favorite drinks. Okay, I think uh, we'll move on to, uh, let's see, I want to talk about where, so we're talking about drinking culture today. So let's talk about where you drink. Now, um, one of the key words, as you can see, is pub. Um, and a pub is short for public house. A public house. Uh, and the reason for this is uh, pubs have been around in England for such a long time, long, long, long time, um, perhaps thousands of years. I, I think I, I remember rightly. I, I think it was, uh, I, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, a public house is somewhere, it originated as somewhere where they just sell alcohol and uh, locals congregate. Um, so that would be probably run out of a house, of course. Uh, and nowadays, uh, they're called pubs, and they're very, yes, bars selling alcohol. But the interest, you know, it's good to compare a pub and a bar, because generally a bar is kind of, the interior is totally different. A bar is newer. They sell cocktails. Uh, they have music in the background. That's a bar in England, whereas a pub is more kind of wooden, um, you know, there's a bit more traditional. They normally just sell beers and wines and things like that. Um, uh, and, oh, there's a fact here from Mark. The oldest pub in the UK is in Nottingham. Ah, right. I, I can't search now, but do you know how old it is? I'd be very interested because uh, I think I might be getting my years wrong. Uh, but, yes, I, I put that on my Instagram a while ago. Um, and Bear and Beauty... Do you live in Japan? No, I don't. I live in uh, South Korea. Uh, yes, sorry. I live in South Korea. Uh, so I do reference this country a lot. Um, I've been here for 10 years. Uh, I love it here. And uh, I run Jack's English here. My, my company is in Gangnam. Uh, I don't know if you know Gangnam, but it's sometimes mentioned. Uh, so that's what I do. Yes, I'm in Seoul. Gangnam in Seoul. So yes, a pub. Um, so the, the pub is very different. Um, it's a really important part of English culture. Uh, it's If you go to England, it's somewhere that you should try to visit, you know, try to get an evening in a pub or an afternoon, have a nice meal. So how about you? In your country, oh, there you go. Here's uh, my cousin with the facts, uh, 1189. So incredibly old and it still exists now that's amazing so uh, in your country uh, i'm going to put this in the uh, comments in your country where do you normally drink so as i said in england pubs uh if it's a bit more of a kind of an active night out then uh, you may perhaps you go to a bar in the city um, of course, you have clubs, but uh, I'm far too old for clubs now. Uh, where else? Um, obviously, hotels, but of course, that would be a hotel bar. So how about you? In your country, where do you normally drink? Uh, if you're interested in Korea, we, we of course have lots of bars, but uh, they call them Hofs here. Hofs, which comes from German. I don't know why they do, um, but they call them Hof bars. Yeah, Layla, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think. I think generally in America you call them bars uh, and they have sports bars. But perhaps in the cities they do have pubs. Maybe someone here can um, confirm that for me. So Rio says, uh, is a Kaya? Yeah, is a Kaya. Uh, is a Kaya. So Rio, are you talking about Korea? Because that's, I mean, Ezekiah, yeah, that's the place I'm familiar with, of course, which is like a, a, a Japanese bar, I would call it. Uh, but are we talking about the same thing in Korea, the name of a chain of bars slash restaurants? Um, or is Ezekiah, is that actually a Japanese word? Um, please let me know, Rio. I have no idea. But I, I, I'm familiar with the word. I've heard it before. Um, so, Heidi likes to go to a bar uh, or sometimes a club. Great. Or festival once in a blue moon. Well done using these uh, Q 
key words today, key phrases. Fantastic. So, uh, yes, I don't really go to festivals. Um, I, I've been to them, but uh, rarely. Um, of course, festivals are a huge part of British culture, so perhaps once I go back to England, I'll have to experience them a bit more. Um, how about everyone else? Where do you drink in your country? What's a normal place? Um, hopefully, uh, Rio, you can confirm. I'm really curious because uh, I do go to a restaurant slash bar called Izakaya with friends sometimes. It's wonderful. Um, so yes, we're talking about places we drink. Uh, while we are on that subject, I'm going to just teach you a bit of a, a cultural thing, I suppose. It's a, not a very particularly nice part of uh, culture, but it's called pre-drink. Pre-drink. Um, which you can use as a noun or you can use it as a verb. Um, to pre-drink is to drink before going out. Um, and this is a... I don't know if it's a British thing or if it's particularly a, a, a younger British thing when we don't have as much money. Uh, it's certainly something I experienced when I was younger. And a pre-drink is to drink before you go to a bar or club or something because it's cheaper. So you, you perhaps you do some drinking games at someone's house. You cook uh, maybe and, and have that with some drinks and... Uh, Yes, it's exactly that, Heidi. It's a warm-up. It's a warm-up for going out. But uh, I think that's kind of connected to saving money uh, and also, yeah, as you said, kind of warming yourself up, getting yourself a bit jolly before you go to the main venue. Uh, and we used to do that. Yeah, Zainab, yeah, it's to spend less money. So, you know, drinks are a few pounds, you know, maybe... Uh, I can't remember now, three or four pounds, three or four quid. Uh, if you go to a bar, whereas if you have it at home, you can uh, you can buy a big bottle and share it among friends. So pre-drinks were a huge part of my earlier, my younger years, you know, in my late teens and early 20s, but uh, don't need to do it anymore. So uh, how about you? Any, any more updates? Where do you drink? I'm interested. Places like Turkey. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, of course, some of these countries you don't drink. Um, I don't think... Uh, France, I suppose we're similar. Uh, oh, here comes France now. Um, so yeah, bars, homes. Um, before we can drink at work to celebrate a retirement. Oh, it's not allowed anymore. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure in England, and I'm not sure in Korea. I think in Korea you're allowed to, but generally people don't. Um, Zainab, uh, not forbidden, good. Um, so where do you normally drink, Zainab? What kind of, is? would you call it a bar? Um, is it more like a British pub? Is it a bit more traditional? Um, how would you describe a typical drinking place in Turkey? Um Pubs and bars, yeah, great. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go on to the next section. And now we have a chance to learn some British slang, uh, which people normally find interesting. Uh, Niazi, drink outside in parks and streets. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Niazi. Uh, actually, in Korea, you can do that. So sometimes I meet my friends and we, uh, we drink down by the river, which is very pleasant. But in England, you can't do that. It's illegal. Um, and I'm sure it's the same in France, I guess. Um, and I agree with you. I really enjoy having a drink outside. You know, nice bit of sun and uh, a cider is wonderful. So, um, as I said, we'll, we'll move on to the next section, uh, which is uh, on the list. It's drunk versus drunken. And this is going to move on to some kind of slang words that I, I've prepared for you. Now, firstly, the reason I've chosen drunk and drunken is I very often hear mistakes. Um, I very often hear people say, I was drunken. So I'm going to put that in here. I was drunken. And with a big X because it's wrong. Now, do you know why? Do you know why, you know, how you can correctly use drunken? Uh, Hamid doesn't drink. 
Turkey in almost every city you can find bars and clubs. Okay, thanks for letting us know, Hamid. Yeah, yeah, so there's quite a few non-drinkers today. It really depends on uh, your culture, where you're from, various things. So why is drunken? Um, drunken is the process to become drunk. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how you would use that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I, I'm going to tell you uh, the, the main difference, okay? The, the reason this is so common. Using drunken as, and drunk as an adjective, you can say, I am drunk, okay? I am drunk. That's fine. I'm going to put a big O next to that because that's fine. But drunken only goes before the noun. So, for example, a drunken man which is a big O because that's correct, a drunken man. So you can never say, I am drunken. Uh, you can never say, um, I always hear, I was so drunken. But you can say a drunken man, there was a drunken man. Um, so just be careful with that. I, certainly I hear that, yeah, both of them are adjectives, Zeynep, uh, in this case. And, uh, you know, it's a really common mistake here in Korea. I don't know about other countries, but normally people are a little bit um, confused with that, uh, which is understandable. So hopefully that's okay. Hopefully that explains the difference between that. It's so common. But I could say I am a drunken woman. Yes, you could. As long as the adjective drunken goes before the noun, in this case woman, that's fine. Yeah, I am a drunken woman. That's fine. Well done. Okay, now, as I promised you, I'm going to give you some slang words, some British slang, which all mean drunk. Now, uh, yes, well done, Leila. He's a drunken person. That's a perfect example. Now, uh, let's go with uh, wasted. Oh, why am I not typing? Wasted. Wasted. I was wasted. I was drunk. Exactly the same meaning. Uh, one that I use... Hammered. I was hammered. Exactly the same meaning. Um, I don't know where these come from. Uh, you know, I don't know. Obviously, hammered, uh, you can maybe talk about a hammer, but uh, I don't know the origin of it. But hammered is a really common... Yeah, these are all extremely drunk. Or drunk. Um, you know, wasted, uh, drunk. But yeah, normally we, we, we use these words to say you're extremely drunk, very drunk. So yeah, that's a good point, Heidi. Um, so wasted, hammered, uh, one that I like as well. Uh, plastered, lolly lolly, pissed, absolutely right. Uh, I'd say pissed is a little ruder, um, but fine, you know, it's so common. It, it wouldn't upset anyone, uh, I would say. Uh, perhaps yeah, I would just say it's slightly ruder than the other ones, uh, but very common, yeah. So, wasted, hammered, plastered, pissed. And then finally, I was out of it. So, you use that in the same way. I was out of it last night. Um, and to say you're out of it, that's kind of like I wasn't... Um, I was out of my mind. That's what it's like. It's saying I was out of my mind. Um, I wasn't really conscious of what I was doing. So another very common word or phrase for drunk, very drunk. Uh, <laughs> hammered, hammered. Yeah. Hammered, hammered or hammered, hammered. Yes, it's very, very similar. Yeah. So we've got five there. Wasted, hammered, plastered, pissed and out of it. Uh, all of these are British ways of, of saying extremely drunk. I'm afraid I can't tell you whether they're okay for American. I, I just don't know. I'd say some of them are. For example, wasted, I'd say they use in America. Out of it, I'd say they do. Particularly those two, but I, perhaps not the others. Um, and then for Layla um, and any others who don't drink, uh, these, these are... The first four are not used outside of drinking. Um, pissed, you can use meaning angry. 
So I'm just going to give you that extra meaning. I was pissed is a rude way of saying I was angry. Um, and then also out of it um, is also used outside of drinking because you can say out of it meaning um, not fully present, I suppose we could say. Not fully conscious. I was kind of... Um, I was out of it. I, I wasn't really listening or concentrating. Um, so perhaps, you, you know, you have a conversation with your friend and your friend says, uh, are you listening? And you say, oh, sorry, I'm a bit out of it today. I'm not really fully in my mind. So pissed and out of it do have ways of using outside of drinking. I'm talking so much today. Uh, <laughs> I hope this is all interesting and I hope uh, you're learning a lot. Uh, piss off have also the same meaning. Yeah, so okay, that's an interesting one and we're getting a little rude now, but uh, I hope people are okay with that. Uh, bearing beauty. Piss off means go away. You say piss off, go away. Pissed off means angry. I was pissed off. So actually be careful to get it right. Um, and Leila, could I say my dad is pissed? Yes, you can. And that is, I'd, I'd say also that's a shortened word version of pissed off. My dad is pissed. My dad is pissed off. That means he is angry. So yes, you use it as an adjective um, and it means exactly the same as probably you, you could say very angry because it's quite expressive. Um, and just remember, as I said, bearing beauty, piss off is a command meaning go away. So careful to put that ED on or not, uh, depending on your meaning. Uh, I'm teaching very uh, rude English today. I don't normally do that, but uh, uh, please don't blame me if you upset someone by telling them to piss off. Uh, it's not my fault. <laughs> I did warn you. Um, Okay, so um, that's five British slang for drunk with various other meanings. Hopefully that's uh, easy to understand. Um, and we're going to move on to the last section uh, of today's lesson. As I said before, don't forget you can ask me anything you want if you have a question. Sometimes I get questions through Instagram and Twitter. Um, and I try to answer if they're, they're easy to answer. If not, I like to do it through here and I try to give you a full answer. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions. Um, okay, let's move on to a hangover. Hangover. Now this is actually a famous movie as well, The Hangover. What is a hangover? I'll have a drink of water while you're thinking. This is a horrible, horrible symptom of uh, an effect of uh, drinking. Yep, well done, Heidi. So it's the, the negative effect that you uh, experience after drinking. Now, I hate hangovers. Of course, uh, everyone hates hangovers. Um, and Heidi, as you probably know, a red wine... Hangover is a pretty brutal. It's, uh, it's a horrible thing. Um, Yaman, welcome and thanks for joining. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, and yes, exactly. If you drank too much yesterday, then today you are sick. Um, so what are the symptoms? What are some hangover symptoms? Call it cater. Kater, am I saying that right in German? Um, okay, yeah, so what are some hangover symptoms? I hate a hangover, and particularly uh, from uh, red wine. So yes, headache's probably the number one, right? That, that banging headache, uh, especially on the temples, which is here. What else? What are some other? Yeah, Leila, well done. They drank a lot, but particularly the next day you wake up with this sickness. What are some other symptoms of a hangover? Um, a headache, and also you, you kind of you get a particularly a headache from the light. You know, it's it's hard to open your eyes. You feel horrible. Okay, well done, Rio. Vomiting, absolutely. You're vomiting, especially if it's a serious 
a hangover, dizzy, yeah, tiredness, uh, lolly lolly, I'm sure it's just a slip of the fingers, but don't forget uh, the de-tiredness, um, and uh, a l much appetite, <laughs> okay, I think that depends on you, actually, I don't know, uh, I think some people hate to eat anything when they have a hangover, and some people love to eat. For me personally, I can't eat when I have a hangover, but once I kind of overcome the hangover, then I'm starving and I eat so much. And yes, Heidi, you can get a stomach ache. Uh, another one which no one's mentioned, uh, dry mouth. Uh, I, I think most people would experience a dry mouth after drinking, uh, I certainly do, and you, you, you get a horrible feeling on your tongue, and on your, it's, it's just awful. So yes, I, I think some people have an appetite, some people don't, uh, and as Rio said, you can just vomit a lot, uh, especially if it's particularly serious. Um, yeah, good. So that's a, a hangover and one of my favorite things to discuss, especially with people from other countries. Uh, and I'm going to ask you the question now. Um, what is your hangover cure? Now, I think this depends on the country and it also depends on your preference. Um, um, yeah, man, I don't know that actually. Um, so 14 units, have they reduced or increased? I assume they've reduced it, right? Uh, but I didn't know that, no. Um, it's been so long since I've drunk there. Um, so yeah, what is your hangover cure? A hangover cure is the food or drink you have when you have a hangover in order to overcome it. Um, so, uh, oh, 14 units a week, wow, seven pints a week, okay, so a pint a night, right? Um, Heidi's hangover cure is sleeping and drinking water, yet yeah, very smart. Uh, <laughs> lolly lolly, drink another beer, that's called hair of the dog. I don't know why, uh, I'm sure someone can tell us, but hair of the dog is where you're, you have a hangover, and in, in order to cure it, you have more alcohol. Yeah, and some pills. I'll tell you my hangover cure. It's a full English breakfast. A breakfast. A full English breakfast is bacon, sausages, mushroom, baked beans, toast, egg, all these delicious things. It's very oily, so I feel like it goes into my body and it soaks up all the alcohol and I feel fantastic. Um, so obviously I have to wait until I'm not feeling too sick so I can eat this and then that really helps me overcome that, that headache and dry mouth. So a full English breakfast and a coffee for me. That's not very healthy, but uh, it is my hangover cure. Uh, how about anyone else? Uh, what's your hangover cure? Yeah, Zainab, you're right. Having a shower is a, a, is a bit of a hangover cure, especially a cold shower. Uh, that can kind of really freshen you up after uh, a night of drinking. Um, how about some food? Has anyone got any food suggestions? Some people have like a hamburger. That's their hangover cure. Here in Korea, they have spicy soup. Spicy soup is the hangover cure in Korea um, because they feel like it's spicy, so they sweat out the alcohol. I don't know if it's true, but uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, I think it helps somewhat. Um, Heidi, yeah, that's, that's the reason, right? Plenty of people drink when they're in the hotels, when they're on holiday, so the hotels have to make sure everyone's okay in the morning. Um, I think that kind of greasy food helps after drinking alcohol. So has anyone else got a, a, a hangover suggestion, hangover cure suggestion? Uh, we've had a, a lot of sort of water and pills and things like that, but uh, not much food. Um, another one for me, and this is probably my weird one, uh, my hangover cure is, now let me think, it's a, uh, well, it's a galaxy chocolate bar, a chocolate bar plus a blue power aid. Has anyone had blue power aid? Uh, that's my hangover cure. Give it a try. It's really, really effective. Um, yeah, man, uh, and thanks about alcohol. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I saw, saw that came up. I'd like to watch that, actually. 
Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so common. And Lolly, I love spicy soup. Oh, right, even though you don't have a hangover. Uh, yes. Spicy soup's lovely. I also love it. It really feels like you sweat a bit and uh, uh, kind of freshens you up. Yeah, so there's lots of weird methods. My method is a weird one, but I love it. The chocolate bar and blue Powerade. It has to be that combination. I don't know why. Uh, perhaps the Powerade kind of puts some energy in you, gives you, a, I don't know, it, uh, it perks me up. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's hangover cure. And finally, our final phrase for today, to sleep off. Uh, let's put to sleep off something um, because uh, let's just answer Yaman's question. So what's the difference between weird and bizarre? Um, I wouldn't say there is a difference. You know, whenever I explain bizarre, um, it's, it's kind of a synonym of weird or strange, you know. So if you describe someone as they are acting bizarrely, um, that's exactly the same as they're acting weirdly, um, or that is bizarre, is that's weird. So I don't think there is a difference, yeah, man. I'll take a look, but um, for me, they are synonyms. Um, now, as I said, the last phrase for today is to sleep off something, um, or probably, uh, you can do both, but I'd probably say uh, sleep something off. Um, sleep a cold off. Sleep off a cold. Yeah, both are fine. Sleep off of something or sleep something off. Um, and that means you sleep to overcome something. So you sleep off a cold, sleep off a fever, sleep off a hangover. That's why it's such a good word or a, a phrasal verb for today because you sleep in order to overcome. Now, uh, a question here from Heidi. Is odd common to use for weird as well in the UK? Yeah, for sure. It's very common. He's odd. That's odd. It's actually really, really common. Is it uh, in America? I'm not sure. Uh, we use it so much in England. Uh, odd. Um, uh, and if you... <laughs> uh, it just came to my mind. An odd ball. An odd ball. He's an odd ball. Uh, is uh, kind of a slang just meaning a weird person, like a weirdo. Uh, he's an oddball. Um, so yeah, well done, Zainab. You sleep something off to get rid of the unpleasant feelings. So if I've got a headache, ah, I'm just going to go and sleep it off. Sleep it off uh, means I'm going to sleep in order to overcome it. Uh, yes, like, uh, no, I wouldn't say so, Heidi, actually. Idiot is kind of more towards, like, someone is stupid. Whereas um, oddball is someone's weird, uh, and weird and stupid are different things, right? Uh, one is more about intelligence, one is, uh, you know, whether they are normal uh, or not. Um, and uh, Layla, you try to forget what happened before. Uh, I think that's true, but, it, you know, that's not really what it means. Uh, it, it is uh, probably part of it, but uh, it, that's not what it means. Um, Ozanir, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I used to drink mineral water. Yeah, that's, that's the number one, right? That's the best hangover cure. Just mineral water. Replace the water in your body and you'll be fine. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, man, I agree with you. Um... So I think we are able to wrap this up. So I think we've covered everything regarding drinking. I hope you learnt a lot today. Uh, it was really kind of um, slang oriented. There's a lot of slang, of course, because we're talking about alcohol. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, and obviously this this topic is not for everyone. So, you know, I'm sorry to those who don't, you know, who don't drink, they're not interested in drinking. Um, uh, Galal says, stop drinking or stop to drink. I'll just uh, uh, interrupt myself. Uh, to stop drinking or stop to drink. Uh, different meanings, both are fine. Stop drinking means you stop doing something. You cease that activity. So I stop drinking. So now I stop talking. Now, stop to drink means you're moving and you stop and drink. So, for example, you go for a walk. Ah, oh, let's stop to drink. Means you stop in order to drink. So, both are fine, Galal. 
but they are absolutely different meanings, uh, but a great question. Um, yeah, and Yazi, I have a lot of Turkish followers. Uh, I don't know why, but great. You know, I'm starting to learn more and more about Turkey, and I hope to visit your country one day. Um, so, yeah, thanks, everyone. I really enjoyed. Um, as I said, we will do a different topic next time. Um, so, you know, I'll make sure that everyone's happy. Uh, please like, you know, hit that like button. It really helps me just grow my channel and, and make all of this worth it. Um, so I'd really appreciate if you just hit that like button. I always appreciate that. And check out my other videos. Uh, check out that uh, K-pop video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, that was a, a bit of a difficult one to make. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Great to see you all. And I see some people liking. So thanks. I really appreciate that. That means it makes such a difference for me. Um, and yeah, I'll be back very soon. Uh, you know, I'd say probably two weeks. Uh, I have a big list of topics. Thank you, everyone. And uh, good night or good afternoon or good morning. It could be anything, right? Uh, see you all soon. Thanks a lot.